Hello, everyone. I'm back. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Dana Goodwill. Over there's John Lewandowski. How you doing, John? Good. So if you were wondering why I was away, I had a hectic day, and there was just no way I was going to find the time to be able to watch or cover any of the games or anything like that. I was overtired, and John heard me, and I sounded like the old, you know, you ever remember watch those old cartoons with the witch where that's what I sounded like. Since then, I've had a sore throat, so. But I am COVID negative. <laughs> First thing I always check. <laughs> Whenever I catch something now, it's okay, don't be COVID. I want to catch that again for the third time. But, all righty. Well, in two-piece news, um, earlier this week, uh, McCarran practiced with the Admirals. Uh, don't know the line situation or anything like that of who he was lined up with. Um, in tonight's game, was that before or after? That was after okay then i'll deal with that then uh give me a split second here all right so today the nashville predators took on the winnipeg jets shots on goal in the first period winnipeg outshot nashville 15 to 13 in the second period nashville outshot winnipeg 18 to 5 in the third period, Winnipeg outshot Nashville 13 to 10. And in total, Nashville outshot Winnipeg 41 to 33. In the faceoff circle, both teams were at 50%. On the power play, the Jets went 0 for 3, the Predators 0 for 2. Jets had 11 penalty minutes while the Predators had 13. Hits, the Predators had 29, the Jets had 19. Blocks, the Predators had 14, the Jets 11. Giveaways, the Predators 13, the Jets 11. All right. So an untalked about notice here is Saku Melalainen for them, who is actually originally drafted by the Nashville Predators. In the fifth round in 2013. This year he has four goals, two assists, six points. Still better than Cole Smith. <laughs> um, scoring in the first was Pierre Luc Dubois. Uh, he scored his 21st with an assist from Perfetti, his 22nd, and Dylan DeMello, his 14th. That was at the 48th second mark. So this game did not start well. <clears throat> but that's about all that can muster as Cody Glass gets on the board in the second period at the 1349 mark with his sixth with an assist from Roman Yossi, who shuts puck from the point, assisted to him by Forsberg. I was wondering when that was going to get added um, because it was a tip by Cody Glass. All right. Game winner. It doesn't. Here's the thing. As much as I'm like trying to find myself to be connected to this team, Tanner Janot is still a piece of that. Um, uh, you know, I I'm always gonna like Tanner. I think he's a good hockey player. He plays both, you know, styles of the game. Does whatever he needs to get the win. Um. He scored his fourth on a wraparound with a, off of a missed shot by Tommy Novak that went behind the net, dropped down right onto Tanner Janot's stick, wraparound goal. His fourth of the season, his first since October 15th. With an assist by Tommy Novak, his sixth. In for the Jets is... Uh, Vesna candidate this year, Connor Halibut. I think that um, Linus Allmark's going to win it, but that's the same point. Um, he stopped 49 of four, or 49, 39 of 41 with a point 
951 save percentage. And for the Predators was UC Saros stopping 32 of 33 with a 0 0.970 save percentage. All right, your three stars of the game. Third star was UC Saros. Second star was Cody Glass. First star was Tanner Janot. All right, as it sits, the two leagues that we do cover at the current moment, the Admirals sit in second place right behind the Texas Stars by five points. The Nashville Predators sit outside the third central spot by... A point now, or two points. But if everything holds up, so far it is. It's uh, fifteen twenty-one left in the third. If Colorado finishes this, this game off and beats Washington, um, the Avalanche will overtake the Minnesota Wild in the third spot, leaving Winnipeg. Um and Dallas only ahead of them. Um, them two are a ways away. They're about thirteen points away from us. So I mean, it's pretty much playing the game of chase down Calgary and and Edmonton, and well, you got to win multiple games to do that. And well, we won two in a row now. Um. I think we're going to miss the playoffs by a few points. Um, that should be enough to warrant some changes. Um, we'll see what happens. But from right now, the way this team's performed this year, they are 13-7-3 at home and 10-11-3 and on the road. Um, they have 47 games played. Colorado has only played 545. So with two games in hand, that's an extra four points on the board. Colorado has also won five straight. St. Louis has lost two straight as they dropped to the Buffalo Sabres tonight, four to three. Alexander Carrier left the game in the first period of the game today, did not return. Um my early assumption would be that he got hurt during the fight with Stanley, which I will say this, he got his butt kicked. But as much as he got his butt kicked, that was a statement. That anybody on this team will stick up for any player. Yeah. And you got to play with heart in this league or you're going to get dog walked. Um, you know, and, and I, here's the thing. I think Winnipeg came in here and kind of overlooked us. Yeah, maybe. They went, well, we'll get the one goal lead and run and, 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 and then get, you know, funnel into our game a little bit. And the second they stepped back a little bit, the Preds jumped all over it. Right. But it was a pretty even game. I will say that the turnovers got to be cleaner. There's some things they got to do. Um, personally, um, and then as far as that goes, I could see uh McEwen or Gross going back up. But Gross would be on a permanent basis. And with McCarran down here, it would make sense. Yeah, but I don't think they want to do that to the Admirals just yet. Because if they put him on waivers, Colorado's claiming him. It's that simple. Then they'll hold him on their roster for 10 days, put him on waivers, Nashville will claim him, and then he won't play. So this is one of those situations of what do you do? Uh, I Like I said, that's my reason of saying call Brolin McEwen, get that going. He is a right-side defenseman, so... um. That's one of those things where you need a defenseman on that side of the puck um, who's comfortable on that side of the puck. You don't call up the best guy. You call up the best guy to do the job you need done. The best guy may not fit that position. 
Yeah, we'll call up Tomasino to play defenseman. <laughs> Something he's not good at at all. Um, but I will say this. Um, how scary is Boston? Boston, 47 games played, 38, 5, and 4. Wow. Won six straight. So your your divisional leaders are as follows: Metropolitan, Carolina, New Jersey, and the Rangers. That's your what your locks are at the current moment. If the playoffs were to start today, then you have Boston, Toronto, and Tampa. Um. Then the wild card spot you got. Washington and Pittsburgh, but given the two games in hand, four points, and that would put them at 57 if they won. And this game today is not concluded, so it'll technically be three games in hand. So that'd be six points. Yeah, they say if they got four out of the six, they'd make the playoffs. Yeah. Now it would be a tiebreaker between Pittsburgh and Washington. Um, In the Central, it's Dallas, Win Winnipeg, and Minnesota, but like I said, if that Colorado game against Washington holds up, and Colorado and Minnesota flip spots. Yeah. Um, in the Pacific, it is Vegas, uh, the Kings, and Seattle. Um, Seattle is one of those interesting ones that have just come on lately and just kind of run away. Yeah. Hmm. 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 All right, well, we are back Thursday for our three and three for y'all and us. It's a three and three for me. It is a four and four. Because I am busy on Sunday. <laughs> hmm. And then I get a day off, and then I have to go back to the Panther Arena. <laughs> uh -huh. In five days, I'm at the Panther Arena four times. What does that tell you? I spend too much time there. Hey, Wisconsin Center District, I'm ready for my cot now. I just need a place to sleep and potentially film a podcast. <laughs> uh, at least for this week not to mention I think I'm back actually more than that I don't have my can somebody pull up the first uh, Wednesday through Sunday for February um, yeah give me a sec alright uh Sorry about that, folks. We're all trying to pull and grab our phones and... <laughs> oh! I'm there Thursday, I'm there Friday, I'm there Saturday, and I'm there Sunday. Yeah. Uh, can I just live there? <laughs> But I, I joke, I joke, all in fun. I think it's going to be fun. I think I'm going to be a very tired individual. But we'll see what happens. All righty. So um, our next video is the Preds and the Devils. That's the Admirals and the Ice Hogs as it's All-Star Weekend. I believe this weekend or next weekend. I'm not a hundred percent sure. 
But the Reds have almost a full week and a half off. Their next game after Thursday is not until February 7th. Okay. And for us, during that time, we have one, two, three, four, five, five home games. We also have one, two, three, four, five, six days off. Woohoo! <laughs> um, and just a friendly reminder. Hey, Rockford, I'm coming. By the way, for those of you Admirals fans going down, going to Rockford, there's a hat giveaway that night. Um, the Screw City hat that they have going up. I'm not kidding. It's literally called the Screw City hat. I happened to see their posts about it. They were promoing it on Facebook. Um, because apparently I've looked at Rockford stuff enough that their promotions pop up on my screen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I'm always trying to find out what they're up to, and what our divisional opponents are up to, and it's a good way to keep up to do uh, up to date on your division news. Yeah, because they'll post team stuff before they post the the league posts it as before they post it as news. So for me, it's a good easy way of going. Okay, it's game time. This guy got called up. This guy got sent down. You know, for this team, um, he won't be in the lineup. It's an easy way for me to make a tweet. Or make a Facebook post on our page. So just to, I'm not a fan, even though I used to be. Um, back when they were in the UHL as the Milwaukee Admirals affiliate. Two of my favorite players to play for that team, Robin Big Snake and uh Greg Zanin, who was with the Admirals for quite some time. Um and other uh, news. So we're talking NHL news. Congratulations to Chris Letang in his first game back. He scored the OT winner. Um, wait, what? The NHL skills competition adds three new events: the splash shot, the Pitch and puck and the Tendy Tandem. This is on February 3rd. Why do I feel like we have a game that day? Because we have a game that day. Yeah, I think we do. The Admirals play that day. Uh huh. And I think I don't know when the AHL All Star is, but we play pretty much every weekend the next couple months. Yeah. February sixth and seventh, fifth and sixth. So Sunday and Monday. And then with Monday, and then the Preds play on Tuesday, I don't see them sending us Milbeck. Just for him to be an AHL All-Star. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Who knows? But, nah. All righty. Well, that's all the news I got for everyone. Um, Outside of... Uh, Kevin Fiala gives the Kings the OT winner against the Flyers. Uh, Preds extend a home win streak to four games. Sabres hold off the Blues to win four straight. Perry scores twice in the uh, Lightning win. Top lifts the Red Wings to OT win. Bruce Boudreaux refused to quit. Uh, Canucks job, even though he was offered to resign. Instead of being fired, uh, congratulations to St- 
Steven Stamkos on 500 goals. Uh, Washington just scored. So did Anaheim. So Anaheim is now beating Arizona 4 nothing, And the game in Colorado is 3-2. to two. Vancouver scores, tying that one up. Uh, Boston beat Montreal. Pittsburgh beat the uh, Panthers 76 in overtime. Uh, like I said, the Kings won, but they won four to three in OT. Uh, Minnesota gets owned by Tampa four to two. Detroit beats San Jose three to two in overtime. New Jersey beats Vegas three to two in overtime. Buffalo beats St. Louis three. Wait, sorry. New Jersey Devils beat Vegas Golden Knights three to two in overtime. And Buffalo beats St. Louis five to three. Nashville beats Winnipeg two to one. Now here's how much everything can shift in one day. Dallas plays tomorrow. We play on Thursday. All right. On Thursday alone, Winnipeg plays Buffalo. We play New Jersey. Uh, Minnesota plays Philly. Colorado plays Anaheim. Calgary plays Chicago. And St. Louis plays Arizona. So if we lose, let's just say, and everything holds as it is, if we lose that game versus the Devils, and everybody wins. We'd still be in fifth place. <laughs> uh -huh. But just saying, you know, at this point, I just see us missing the playoff by a few points. Um, Calgary and Edmonton. Edmonton's more of a better team where Calgary's better coached. And I'm, I'm I'm not afraid or ashamed to say it. I think that Calgary will, you know, Daryl Sutter is definitely a better coach than John Hines. I'm, I'm, you, you, he has Stanley Cups. Can't argue with that. Yeah. When you have a Stanley Cup to your credit, that makes you a good coach. It takes a good coach to win one of those. All righty, so that is all I got for you guys. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Hope you guys enjoy your Wednesday tomorrow. And just remember, have fun, because that's what we're trying to do. Yep. Yeah.